Do you practice scales all day long but still can't play fast? Then I think I know what the problem is and I'm gonna help you solve it right here and right now. So hi there, I'm Chris and this is one of the top problems I see among my students. Basically people practicing like this in the hope that that kind of practicing is gonna make them play runs like this. And the thing is, in theory it's all good. Um, you practice your scale up and down and then hopefully you're gonna be able to play amazing solos built on that scale. But this is kind of based on a misconception which I think comes from learning your first chords. Because if you learn to fret your first chord, you practice it a little bit and then you learn another chord and soon enough you're gonna be learning to play whole songs. So if you come from that and then learn your first scale, uh, you're just gonna assume that, well, if I learn my first scale, I'm gonna be able to play my first solo. Uh, but it doesn't really work that way because a chord, you can simply strum it and it's gonna sound good, at least if you have a clean tone. <laughs> but uh, with a scale, you can't just strum it. Instead, you're gonna have to learn to play patterns, licks and phrases within your scale, okay? And on top of that, usually when you're speaking about rock solos, uh, you need a bit of technique and a bit of speed to build some momentum. And that's exactly what we're gonna speak about today. I'm gonna show you that instead of practicing your scales like this, and hope that it's gonna make you play like this, which it won't, uh, we're gonna look at how exactly you would break down that kind of playing so you can practicing, practice it in manageable chunks and bits where you can actually build speed. And then we're gonna piece it together. So first of all, let's just grab one single note and see if you can play that fast. So I'm gonna play the 12th fret high E string. Can you build some speed with this note? And can you do it without, you know, tensing up and too much of a bit movement, so small control movement. If you can't do that, um, then that kind of sets the limit for all your playing. So uh, you won't be able to play a more advanced run either if you can't just play one single note fast. So start with that. Learn to play one single note fast. So once you can do that, then you can start adding more notes on that same string. And that's totally gonna shift the focus from just being able to build some momentum and speed with your right hand to actually synchronizing the speed with both hands. So for example, we could play 12, 14, 15. Uh, that would be a great little exercise for building speed on one string. And the same thing is true here. Can you do this without tensing up too much, without exaggerating, uh, or, or you know going into a like big movement that's you know inconsistent uh, you want small machine-like movements that are relaxed but super effective um, now you've taken two important steps you have built momentum and speed with one note and you started synchronizing your hands Let's take it one step further and see what happens when we move to the next string. And I want, to, uh, want you to note that I've still not tried to play like this, right? We're far away from that. So instead, we're just gonna add one single string and also one note to our little exercise here. So one, two, three, that's what we've done. Now we're gonna go back and down to the 15th fret B string. So we get uh, that's just one of a million different ways to build speed. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to tab these out and give you a link so you can, you know, in a controlled and methodic manner just go through them and learn them. Uh, but this basic lick is just from the E string, uh, it's 12, 14, 15, 14, 12, and then down to 15, and then we start again. Um, now, here's the thing. Do you notice what we've done now? 
We haven't even attempted to just blaze through the whole thing. Instead, we've practiced in a way that focuses on your likely limitations here. And the thing is, when building speed, uh, you're gonna have to be very concerned with small details, such as the ones I've mentioned. Controlling your movements, minimizing them, making sure you're relaxed. And the reason for that is if you tense up, you're going to lose control. You might gain a little bit of speed, but you're totally going to lose control. And you need that control when you start moving between different strings. So the point here is we've limited the extent to our scale of practicing uh, or of our uh, scale of practicing in order to focus on the aspects that actually result in speed. So we haven't even, in a way, started practicing our scale yet. That comes later on. And this is kind of the whole point here. Um, you, you don't build speed with a scale. You build speed with an exercise. And a smart exercise is not going to force you to go through six strings when you're starting out. Instead, a smart exercise just focuses on your problem area, which, if you're starting out, is most likely uh, found in, in, in those small details there, just making one note, play one note fast. That's what you want to focus on. Again, if you can't do this, and if you can't do in a controlled manner, uh, just playing on two strings, there's no way you're going to be able to do it with six strings. Practicing six strings, scalar playing, is not going to help you reach your goal of playing fast. Okay? So, um, I don't, I mean, this is an absolutely huge topic and I don't uh, want to try to squeeze much more information in you at this point because, you know, what exercise you choose to practice is going to be totally dependent on, you know, what your musical preferences are, which soloing styles you like, which techniques you're into. I mean, do you want to pick every note or are you looking to play legato or maybe more of a hybrid legato approach where you use your right hand fingers? All that stuff matters when choosing your exercises, and the topic is huge. But the purpose of this video is to make you realize that you shouldn't just grab a scale diagram and think that if you play that up and down for long enough, you're gonna be able to play fast. It might give you other benefits, yes. It might help you visualize where those you know, seven or five notes are on the fretboard, that's awesome. Uh, but it's not gonna give you a cool um, soloing technique, or probably not the way you think it will. Instead, being smart about this, breaking things down into small chunks, and then gradually expanding uh, your fast playing. That's the way to go. So, um, if we, you manage to play this two note or two string exercise, then the step isn't huge to start playing on three strings, right? Or four strings. Sooner in there, five strings. And there we have it, six strings. But that comes from gradually increasing the difficulty level. And, uh, you know, I'm fast forwarding here. You know, doing this would require you uh, to spend a lot of time practicing and slowly expanding with one string at a time and thinking about all those things, you know, consistent movements and relaxed techniques, small effective movements, remaining relaxed while, you know, hitting the right string, all of that stuff takes time. But please, do me a favor, don't learn this in the wrong order. You've got to start small and then expand it. And that's all my message for today. <laughs> so, Thanks so much for watching. Uh, I'm going to add a link below where you can find these exercises and go through them slowly. Uh, and uh, you've been wonderful. And I've been Chris Vidal. Thanks so much for watching. See ya. Cheers.